So what we get to now is, based upon that information, we need to make some corrections. All right, we did preliminary, or we did balancing of the angles. All that was just a balance. We just threw in the exact angles. We didn't adjust distances at all. We calculated preliminary azimuths. From those azimuths then, and from the distances that we originally measured, we calculated our departures and our latitudes. And then we just decided and told, us our, told ourselves, how well did we do? How well was our linear misclosure, and what's our relative precision? Now what we get to do is we get to make an adjustment. Keep in mind we're not fixing the data. All we are doing is making an adjustment. And you can kind of look at it as kind of putting a dress on it, making it look better, you know, to, to present. We've already proven in the past that uh, based upon so many angles that uh, we, we fit within our, um, our guidelines of our survey. So, so we're okay there. So it's not like our errors are so gross that we're trying to hide those gross errors. No, we still did a really good survey. But now, to submit reports, anything, we have to prove that geometrically, everything fits perfect. So what we do is this adjustment now. The way we do it is through what we call the compass rule. It ad adjusts the departures and the latitudes of a traverse uh, while the traverse courses in proportion to their lengths. So it's not as rigorous as a least squares method that you can do but it is very good because it's logical. It's a very, like it says here, logical distribution of, of those misclosures. So let's go through, figure out, you know, what it takes. So here's your, here's your equations, and I'll give you these. So the, the correction in departure, and this is for, for uh, you know, from point A to B or B to C or C to D, whatever it is. Each one is going to receive a correction. So the correction is, it's the negative of whatever it was. So if you miss, miss close too far to the east, well, of course, that correction then is going to pull you back to the west somewhat. So that means every point then is going to get a portion of that correction. So you take the total departure miss closure divided by the traverse perimeter. That gives you a ratio for that line, for that specific line, you know, or for everything. And then you're going to multiply, the, multiply it by the length, which is that one specific line. So that's how you get your departure. Latitude, very similar, except this time you're using your total latitude miss closure over the whole traverse perimeter. So this is the whole table right here to tell us, all right, what uh, you know, what it is that what's going on, what uh, what happened, and, and how it worked. You can see that our original departures that we have here unadjusted gave us those values, and that's what. Uh, uh, that's what we're gonna we're gonna do. So if you look here, so our departure now from A to B. Make sure you see how everything's written inside here from A to B, B to C, C to D, and you see where the preliminary azimuths. It's between them because that's what they're saying. From A to B, this was our preliminary azimuth that we calculated. We had a length that we computed, so we need to now know what our departures and latitudes are, and that's what we already calculated before. Okay. Now we're talking about corrections here. So you take A to B, for example. Take the total departure miss closure. What do we have? You look down here, 0.026. Divide by the traverse perimeter, which is 2466. Now we multiply it, multiply it by the length of A to B. So this is where I talked about where it's proportioned per every distance and every length that we have. So this correction here in departure is a minus 0 0.07 feet. That's what we have right there. Now the latitude correction. Take that same formula, go through, and now we have a correction of minus 0 0.02, so uh, a negative 0 0.02 feet or a negative two hundredths of a foot correction. So if you take those two values here, add those two together, you take those two values there, add them together, here now is what we call your balanced departures and your balanced latitudes. And you can go through that whole chart now and calculate all those uh, balanced departures and latitudes. Just how we balanced our angles, we made sure that everything would add up to be 540 degrees. Now you've balanced your departures and you balance your latitudes based upon these corrections, based upon a proportion value on the length of each, each leg in there, A to B, C, B to C, C to D, D to E, and E back to A. So that means then if we balance them, if I began at A, I should end at A. What this says then, if you sum up all the departures, you sum up all the latitudes, now look what they end up. They end up at zeros. So therefore, if I started at the coordinate values of 
10,000 in my yeasting, 5,000 in my northing, I should end at 10,000, 5,000. And that's exactly what happens now because we have balanced departures and balanced latitudes. <clears throat> so that was our adjustment. Now the last part of the adjustment is to compute our final azimuths and our final lengths. We do what's called inversing. You take coordinate values, that's why we computed all these coordinates, but it's the computation of the azimuths and distances by using the coordinate values that we have. So to come up with the azimuth, here's your formula. It's the tangent of the azimuth. Again, we're using the azimuths, not bearings, we're using the azimuths. Tangent of the azimuth is equal to the departure over the latitude. And then length, just a distance formula again, is the square root of the departure squared plus the latitude squared. So here's just an example. This isn't related to, to ours that we're doing, but just so you can see, if I have these coordinates right here, start with a, a and I'm ending at B. Just by looking at those two coordinates, you can tell that I'm moving in a positive direction in X, and I'm also moving in a positive direction from Y. So I'm looking at something like this. That's A and that's B right there. Something like that. Just gives you an idea of what we're looking at. Okay, we're looking for now is we're looking from the azimuth from A to B. So how do we do it? We need, first need to know what our departures are. So here we calculate that. And to calculate departure, it's always where you ended up, subtracting where you began. So that's why you have B minus A. So if I'm going A, B, then you need to take the X value of B, subtract the, a, the X value of A. And you get a positive value. And that makes sense. A to B, my departure, I'm obviously going in a positive direction here. And then I'm also going in a positive direction here, which we'll see with our latitude. So then the tangent of azimuth is equal to departures over latitudes. Okay, we're solving for the azimuth. So you just rearrange the equation. You end up now with 48 degrees, 31, 10 seconds. And again, this is the azimuth, which is this angle right there from north. That's why, you know, we're talking azimuth. That's why we're going to say that these are eastings and those are your northings, because everything's measured off of your north. Now let's get a length from A to B as well. And that makes sense, too, if it's just the hypotenuse of that triangle we just created right there. So you're calculating that. We already had our departures and latitudes. Calculate the length. We end up at 400.74 feet. So that is what we call inversing. Taking coordinate values, calculating azimuths from them, and lengths from them. That's, that's really all we talk about is when we talk about inversing. So that being said, here was your adjusted azimuths and lengths, your balanced uh, from your balanced departures and your balanced latitudes, we're making one final adjustment. If we know now what our balanced uh, departures and latitudes are, we can then calculate what the final lengths and final azimuths are, right, based upon those same formulas I just gave you. So you take the, uh, there's a formula for an azimuth, so you take that, and then you can see then, if I used from A to B, we had our departure and our latitude, our balanced ones, took that, entered that information, again, watch where you put the signs, that is very important. Put that inside there, you end up with a final balanced or a final adjusted angle of 126.55.23. So it's no longer balanced anymore from what we did originally. Remember that was just your balanced angles to preliminary azimuths, now this is your final azimuth that we just computed here. Now we get a distance as well using the same departures and latitudes end of the 647.26 feet. So what does that really look like? If you look here, so in red, red are my corrections. Red is the whole traverse correction what we just did. You can see it's not that far off. The distances, a uh, hundredth of a foot off, hundredth of a foot, some distances stayed the same, two hundredths of a foot on one, it just, it just depends. Okay, and remember it was all proportionate on the, the distance that, uh, that we went. So the red then shows also the adjusted azimuths as well as those distances. According to here, you know, that one right there, that was our preliminary azimuth, and that was our just our original observation for our distance. So if you take all those off, we end up now with adjusted azimuths, adjusted distances, which means if you go back and computed all the uh, latitudes and departures, you would start, start at A, go all the way around, and end exactly on A. Or if you did this traverse using the angles, you go all the way around and end right back at A as you calculated everything and uh, what these azimuths are. So this is your final product. 
You can tell there wasn't that much adjustment, but it was enough adjustment to make it geometrically perfect. That's what we're talking about. We just made it. The errors are still inside there. You can see those, those changes in values. The errors are there. It's just that our survey was sufficient enough to be able to do so, and, and now what we're doing is geometrically making everything look, look good and perfect. So that is starting from the beginning, starting going through everything we've talked about into an end product now of this is what you're going to submit as, as your final answer.